All right, so this time around, I wanted to discuss um, extroverted intuition uh, and some of the challenges of defining and spotting what extroverted intuition really looks like uh, in a person. Um, I think most of the time, many of us, and I've been guilty of this myself, are under the impression that high extrovert intuitive types are always going to be this like ADHD-like individual that keeps bouncing from idea to idea and can barely finish a conversation because they're just pouring out so many strange, wacky ideas all the time. And no, I would say that that's incorrect. And I think that there are many uh, people, certainly in the socionics world, that would say that that is incorrect. You can see many people who are high extroverted intuition and are able to stay on topic. They're not bouncing around. They're not necessarily beating you over the head with some strange concept of multidimensionality and space elevators. Like, not not necessarily. So then, what is it? How would you see it? To me, an extrovert intuitive type, the most consistent way that I think I would I see it in people is their wide array of interests. They're going to be focused on abstraction, on ideas, concepts. That's what they care about more rather than achieving things in the sensory world, in the physical world, right? If extroverted sensing is really more about acquiring more and doing more things in the physical space, uh, and exerting your will on the physical space, then extroverted intuition is about acquiring more ideas, concepts, um, ways of doing things, knowledge, essentially. You're looking around for all these different possible things for the sake of it, right? You're just curious about other cultures, other systems, other subjects and things like that and you're kind of constantly moving around gathering stuff and looking at things um, things that are kind of new it's not rehashing the same old thing going over well-known information or at least information that you as an extrovert intuitive would see as old like something you've been doing already you've seen it many times and you're kind of bored of it now uh, even though other people may have never encountered it so that's what I notice with extrovert intuitive types. Um, when you're talking to them or you're trying to type them or something like that, they can tell you about the wide array of interests that they have or have had and how they've moved from one interest to another throughout their life. Um, sometimes going in phases, in cycles. They'll say that I, I had an interest in this particular thing for a year or six months, or I did it for a couple of years, and then, okay, I got a lot out of it, and then I just kind of moved on. I just sort of dropped it, moved on to other things, and then they might go back to it, you know, like a year later. They'll kind of pick it up again, and then maybe come back again, and sort of like you'll see these cycles of on again, off again interest. Um, you'll see again, a wide array of interests. Well, they'll start saying, well, yeah, you know, I'm interested in all these cultural things, this culture, that culture, and they'll explain it to you. They'll prove it to you that they've really looked at it and they know a lot of stuff about it, that they've been dabbling in it for quite some time. Then they'll say, oh, I like all this political stuff too. And I, and I pay attention to these different political theories and concepts and look at all that stuff. Okay. Then I uh, also did these other, like, uh, I tried dabbling in certain physical things. I picked up a dance thing, or I picked up a, um, some cooking thing or, you know, whatever. And they kind of keep bouncing around throughout their life. Um, again, this is not some ADHD thing where they're like in mid sentence, they're jumping ideas or whatever. No, they can be a rather calm person or apparently seemingly kind of calm. Um, but they're just kind of explaining to you how they have throughout their life jump through many different ideas and concepts and, and different phases and things of their life that they were playing with. Some of which they'll kind of show you never had any real tangible purpose to it. There was no money to be made in it. There was no job really involved in it. Um, there was no climbing any kind of hierarchy of any sort in it. It's really just 
looking into these ideas and concepts for the sake of it. Um, something else that um, I think is important for the NE dominant types or anybody who has a high use of NE, this is something I've pondered for quite a while. I always felt that these individuals, probably the IEE, may have some of the hardest time typing themselves. And the reason I say it is because the NE component means that they're constantly able to come up with new reasons as to why they don't think they're a particular type and they're actually a different type, right? They can be creative enough to look at the profiles, look at the information and kind of go, you know what, I, actually, I think I'm probably this, or you know what, I think I'm probably maybe that, or here's some reasons why I think I'm this. And they will sound good reasons, sound like plausible reasons. They'll also show you how they did things in line with that area at some point and not it looks plausible um because any leads especially i would say the iee have this ability to keep bouncing around and looking at different ideas and stuff um and then they have ti polar they don't like to be bound by definitions and rules and certain structure they have a hard time with that um they end up seeing so many possible sides of themselves, so many different ways that they can do this or do that or have done this and done that and and whatever. And it makes it, again, very hard for them to definitively lock themselves down and say, OK, this is definitely my type. This is what I do. Yep, that's it. I'm consistently sticking with that. That's the end of it. They may have a very hard time with that. They just keep periodically changing types or or, or so on. Um, now, some people might argue with that and say, well, no, it's obvious when you see an IEE because they're, uh, they're always the manic pixie dream girl with purple hair and strange outfits and stuff like that. No, that's only one manifestation of it. That's one very simplistic caricature of an IEE. There will be some that look like that, but there'll be others that don't. So starting with what about gender? What happens when you see an IE that's male? Are they necessarily going to be manic pixie dream girl with purple hair? Probably not. Some might, but not all the time, right? What happens if you have IE, but they're not necessarily interested in the purple hair wearing bohemian kind of look. They want to do other things. They come from a different culture come from a different background that doesn't really accept that or they can't really do that sort of thing. Now what, right? So one has to kind of keep that in mind. Um, normally we do see that with any types that, whether they be uh, ILE or IEE, they often probably... <laughs> Uh, did have a phase maybe where they were like this kind of creative bohemian looking type with crazy hair and wearing odd outfits and stuff like that. Um, probably was a time when that happened, but it doesn't mean that that's a permanent fixture of their life, that they're always going to look like that. Um, you could take a look at somebody like Jack from World Socionics Society. In my view, he's an ILE. I know some people debate that. I don't think it's really much of a debate. And if you watch him, go back to some of his videos when he first started. Go back to those videos that were eight years ago, nine years ago, whatever. And you'll see him doing interviews and having videos where he's wearing a top hat. He's got suspenders on. He's got weird flower on. He's got strange colors that don't even match. Just all these odd things going on. And you'll see the humor, the quirky kind of weird humor that maybe some people don't even pick up on you know and point is is that he comes across a lot more as your stereotypical uh ile entp when he does that when he looked like that if you see him now he doesn't appear that way you say well why well years went by he got a job he starts working at a at a stuffy british bank right um where they probably don't want to see that, right? A lot of very conservative, uptight British bankers and so on and, and bigwigs 
want to be able to take you seriously. And if you come in there with a top hat and a, and a goofy cane and a flower and stuff like people are going to say, who brought this guy in here? Right. So he's undoubtedly over time through his career had to learn to tone down some of that weird creative look and fit in better with conventional society. Along with doing that for academic purposes, right? Academia, same thing. You got to kind of fit in a little bit more. Um, getting older can also do this to you. And being married, in his case, to um, an SEI can also help to kind of tone that down and kind of help remind you that, hey, this outfit just doesn't work. <laughs> you might want to switch that up, right? And point is, you can see the transition for him. You can see how, yeah, he looked like your stereotypical ILE in the beginning, and then he transitioned into what he kind of looks like now. This more serious-minded, more um, logical, making these arguments and so on. Um, so you can expect that from many people who are any leads. They started as this wacky any type but they don't necessarily sit like that their whole life. They can kind of transition, right? Um, let's look at some of these definitions and so on. So share screen. Bam. So I'm going to use the sociotype here for a moment just because it's kind of convenient and easy to see and all that. So let's just kind of peek around. Right. So over here in the top. Extrovert intuition is an extroverted, irrational, and static information element. Yeah, yeah, you're looking at possibilities, which is kind of what it always comes down to. Different viewpoints, possibilities, different things out there that stimulate your curiosity, particularly your intellectual curiosity. Okay, so any is generally associated with the ability to recognize the possibilities, opportunities, new beginnings, recognizing talent, natural propensity in, in others, differing perspectives and viewpoints, rapidly generate ideas and led by one's intellectual curiosity and ability to stimulate it in others. Uh, types of that value any prefer to try out opportunity rather than consider all possible ways in which it could not work. So they tend to like to dive into different ideas and things. Now something here, I think some people have this idea that your any types are going to like always say yes to everything that they just are like interested in any idea that someone throws out that if someone just starts talking about creating time travel with multi-dimensional thing that the any type is just immediately going to go that's great let's do it oh my god i'm excited yes and, and it's like not necessarily okay uh, even an any dominant type could hear that and maybe go okay let me you know lay it on me what's your idea Okay, and an intelligent, mature, any dominant type can see the idea and go, okay, <laughs> that's, you know, I got it, but let me point out why it actually is not going to work, right? Because those any types may have developed other functions, they will have. They'll have their TI and TE if they're an ILE. Even if they're an IEE, -E, as time goes by, they're going to develop TE. They're going to figure out, hey, what works and what doesn't work? What's What What are things that really happen? Okay. There's also going to be IEEs with that because of their FI component. Maybe they don't like your idea. They heard your idea, but they don't like it. It's not what they're into. Or they don't agree with it for more value, personal reasons. And so they don't seem as receptive to the idea that you're throwing out there. Right. So. We, we have to tone down this idea that an any dominant type is always going to be interested in anything, any possible idea, like some little child that's just excited about everything. It's not a good way to look at it. Okay, and then this piece here, any as a leading function. The individual is skilled at generating intellectual interest and curiosity in others and using curiosity to get them to do things. I think that's a bit of a depends because the NE person might be interested in stuff, but that doesn't mean other people, especially people who have poor NE or don't value any, may not be interested in your ideas, right? Others who are NI, for example, 
or either maybe SE dominant types are not interested in all your possible ramblings and ideas and other topics you're going on about. They may see no purpose in that, or it might just be a distraction from them doing what they want to do. So the curiosity in others, you can sometimes, but not always. So it's eh. uh, easily sees parallels between different situations, areas of knowledge and skill and likes to establish contacts across different fields of knowledge and social groups, which allows him to be part of many things at once. Okay, I like this particular piece right there. Um, probably has, again, a lot of interest, a lot of different areas of knowledge, different fields, different kinds of people out there. Um, and because of all these different interests, they may be doing all of these things simultaneously or a lot of them at the same time. Because they're constantly dabbling in so many different things, it makes them kind of makes it easy for them to take an idea from this field over here and sort of try to apply it to this area over here, a completely separate field, right? Here's a concept that comes out of biology or whatever, and I'm going to apply it to this concept over here of like martial arts or this concept here of politics, or I'm going to take this idea about metaphysics or something. And then I'm going to apply that somehow to the real world in some way, you know, like whatever they're just, they're taking these, these little concepts. Um, personally, I think for a lot of the any types, they may not even in their mind, they may be taking these things from here and there and using an analogy or a description, trying to apply it. And to them, it probably feels normal. It probably doesn't feel like it's that big of a stretch to take something from here and go over there. Um, so they may not really feel like it's really that much any. They're just like, eh, it's just, I'm just taking an idea. Like what's the, what's the big deal of this? I don't, I don't get why this is so weird for people. Uh, he enjoys considering different viewpoints and perspectives and seeing if they can be reconciled. Uh, mixing and matching different systems, looking around at different things, um, again, different fields. Yeah. Enjoys the beginning stage just about anything, new projects, acquiring new skills, experiencing new people and relationships. Uh, so very exploring like nature, really exploring the world in all different ways. A lot of interest in that. Preparing for and launching something new is seen as having greater value than the process of experiencing what one already has finished and one has begun the concept of finishing seems foreign to him uh, instead of taking care so diving into a lot of different concepts a lot of different things um and doesn't seem to necessarily finish now what does it mean by finish maybe finish really means that they don't want they don't go all the way in the study of something so that they really become an expert in it or they really become um, somebody who can go get a job in it, uh, or there's, there's some, you know, uh, projects that they just kind of like really hit the ground running, but they don't really go very far. Right. They're just, um, doing it for the fun or some interest in it, or they're doing it to learn something. And then once they feel like they learned something they're like, okay, like, I don't know what else I'm going to pull out of this. Um, and they can just kind of drop it. I could see this also popping up. Like I guess it's popping up for me in terms of like doing a lot of different career paths, a lot of different schooling and you're doing it and you're, you're doing enough of it, but then you kind of stop before you actually finish and get the, the certification or the degree or, or you get the job or whatever, or um, you, you, do get the degree or you do finish the certification but then you don't take the obvious next step of making a full-blown career out of it you're just like okay i got what i wanted and like eh, you know i don't know if this is for me i want to try something else you know and then you just kind of move on to a whole different career field to other people that's going to look like you didn't finish like what are you doing why are you bouncing from one area to another um why bother taking courses and doing things in this area if you were never going to transform that into a job or um, something that you were going to keep going with, right? Well, for that any type, they're like, well, I, you know, I got, I, I figured out what I needed to know and I got a good handle on what's going on in this area, in this field, and now I want to try something else. 
Um, so anyway, um, this is just ways in which I think any can really manifest itself a lot. Uh, I think the idea of, I think the idea of um, this concept that any types always have to be this artsy, creative person that just wants to do bohemian painting and all and wear mermaid hair that's a caricature that's a certain type of of um of any dominant types and particularly a um a very feminine stereotype too there's a lot that are not going to apply with that that's that's not going to work uh they don't do that so So anyway, these are some of my thoughts on any. It's just something that I'm thinking about at the moment quite a bit. Uh, had some, had a friend of mine kind of bring this up. And sometimes it, you kind of get to, oh my God. Anyway, and sometimes you, um, you get some people that uh, are not involved in socionics. They're not involved in typology, but that can be a good thing because they can have greater insight. Sometimes when you get a little too involved in typology things, you can kind of overthink things. You can get a little too wrapped up in stuff and uh, and then you end up missing the obvious. You end up missing things that, are, that the average layman could have told you, could have easily spotted um, and so on. So anyway, that's just some thoughts I wanted to discuss with any. As always, let me know what you think. Um, what are your views on any? Do you often fall into that trap too, or thinking that any is just the girl with the mermaid hair? Uh, does it always have to be the girl with the mermaid hair in your mind? Um, yeah. So let me know.